Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is part 5 of What If Naruto Was Hybrid Devil Prince. If you guys enjoy this what if, and want to see part 6 of it, comment down below, and let me know. The like goal for this video is 200 likes. So like this video, to let me know that you're interested in this series, and you want the next part. And go ahead and check out other what ifs in the channel. Before we start please do support for more awesome content. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like, and also share this video with your friends. So let's start this video. So, why exactly are you here Naruto-kun? The young man shifted in his chair as his eyes tracked the blonde goddess. She sighed once as she sat in a chair across from him, her blue eyes meeting his. I'm rather curious as you've never left the Lucifer estate before, at least to my knowledge. I got tired of being used as a weapon and left. I went under the radar and headed to the human world. Since then I've been adjusting to living in the mortal realm. I have been in Kuo Town recently, and, found myself involved in certain events. Namely a fallen angel plot to capture a sacred gear out from under the noses of the local devils. You parents don't know where you are. Naruto scratched his chin thoughtfully. Well, I'm not 100% sure they don't know where I am. There's a chance they know exactly where I am, but dad is away at the moment, and mom hasn't tried to find me yet as far as I know. So, Freja hummed thoughtfully. You, the true heir of the house of Lucifer and the Namikaze clan, are on your own. He nodded. Winging it as you would say. Naruto nodded again. Yeah. That is pretty much the long, and short of it. He frowned. I suppose you want to go to my mother at the soonest opportunity right? I should. But you won't. Naruto blinked in some slight surprise. He wanted to talk to his patron goddess, but knew from the start she might turn him into his mother, who he was sure wanted him back home. No, it would be too troublesome. The feast will be going on for a while and I do not intend to be sober by the end of it. She gave a mischievous smile. It would be somewhat of a hassle, to remember you were even here afterwards. Can't have that can we? Naruto smirked. No, we cannot. Freja sighed and smiled, leaning back in her chair and crossing her arms over her chest. So tell me what you came here for. Naruto shrugged. Well after that raven problem there was a dove related incident. I took care of it in the way I'm becoming accustomed to, but I couldn't hide the evidence without help, so I came to Auden. The old man could hide the holy grail in his beard, and God wouldn't find it even if he shaved him. Where else would I hide the heiress to the most powerful angel family? Freja's jaw dropped, and her usually calm demeanor shattered. What? A Hyuga. Naruto sighed. Her name is Hinata Hyuga, and she is the daughter of Hiyashi Hyuga. You know who I'm talking about. She's from Konoha, one of the pure villages. From what I managed to figure out, Hiyashi is involved with some bad influences. He sent his two daughters to Kuo Academy to take out the peerages belonging to Ria's Gremory and Sona's Citri. I stopped them just as they were finishing of Sona's peerage. And you killed one of the daughters. No? Naruto scowled and looked away from Freja. Like I would. I hate hurting girls. I threatened to hurt her sister, if she didn't do what I said, and I sent her back home. Freja shook her head. At least you still have some common sense. So this other Hinata girl is going to be staying with us for how long? Until there isn't any point in her hiding. If things keep going as they have been there won't be much of a point in hiding. Once I've been revealed myself to the world at large, either on purpose or by accident, I plan on sending for her. And why not leave her here? Do you have some kind of plan for her? Freja raised an eyebrow. I'm very curious Naruto. Back when I used to visit you, and your father at the Lucifer family castle you didn't have any, goals. You were pretty laid back and content to train, and meet those who came to visit. I'm wondering where this sudden inspiration, to do something came from. Naruto sighed. I got tired of being content. Sounds weird right? I'm not interested in being used by my ass of an uncle anymore. Naruto paused. You know what? I never even figured out if he was really my uncle. I mean he's my mom's cousin, so what does that make him to me? I don't really know the term for it. He can be my cousin and mom's cousin at the same time right? He would be your cousin, once or twice removed I think. I'm not sure. We generally try to forget about whose cousin is whose brother or sister here. Seeing how we're all related it tends to keep things more sane that way. Regardless. As you were saying. Oh right. Naruto grinned, but it faded quickly to something more approximating annoyance. I want to do what I want to do. If that means stepping on a few people's toes then that's what I'll do. Plus I have a long list of things that I want to accomplish before I kick Rizavim of my throne. Freja seemed to settle at that and uncross her arms. She leaned forward ever so slightly asking, and what are some of the things you wish to do before you take up the mantle of Lucifer? First and foremost, I'm rather interesting in getting my harem together before my parents or someone else gets it into their head that I'm the perfect person for their daughter. I'm going to find girls that I care about to fill the seats that my future position will allow. I already have one girl. Rainer Chan is my first. And you want what? Four more girls. Yes. He nodded. But I want to actually have a connection with them, like I do with Rainer. That's why I hate arranged marriages so much. 
I can't imagine being forced to live with someone who you didn't like for nearly all of eternity. It would be torture. A coy smile flittered across Frage's lips. One delicate blonde eyebrow rose. I have a question for you on that subject if you're willing to hear me out. He blinked but didn't say anything. It wasn't every day that a goddess wanted to talk to you on the subject of marriage. Certainly she didn't mean herself as she was already married and the gods didn't wed outside their mythos anyway, so what was she thinking? How would you like to take Rose twice with you when you go? Naruto paused for a second, letting her words sink in. Then he cocked his head to the side. Um, why? Freja smirked and leaned back in her chair. For a few reasons. First of all it would be an excellent tie between your family and the Norse mythos again. Our old contract is gone, and I can't say it hasn't affected us. The power of your family would give a great boost to mine. In addition to that since you will be the head of the Lucifer family in the near future, that will allow our two factions to mingle for the first time in history without the threat of war. Think about it, the Norse allying with the old house of Lucifer through marriage. It's tempting from a political viewpoint. Have you seen her cup size? Naruto coughed. Ahem, and others. Freja curled a lock of her blonde hair around one finger as she continued. There are other reasons as well. Rose Swice is one of our most capable Valkyries, but we are still overstaffed. Since our mythos no longer plays a role in world events, the number of our followers has thinned to almost nothing, and the number of men and women who follow us, and then die on the field of battle. She sighed. Suffice to say the duties, that once required 300 of the best could now be completed by 12. I'm afraid that Rose Swice's skills are going to waste. I, see. Furthermore she's working under Otten at the moment, and she doesn't enjoy it at all. She is a hot-blooded young girl, yet she has no skill in dealing with, or the patience for the kind of things Auden does every day. Rose Swice would probably enjoy herself more doing laundry 8 hours a day, than having to deal with the perverted old man. Naruto glanced down. I, okay you make a good point, but why give her to me? I just made it Rainer Chan a few days ago. I'm not sure that she, or I am ready to take another mate yet. And Rose Swice might not like me once she'd lived with me for a few days. Don't fool yourself. Besides, I never said you had to marry her. All I was asked, was for you to take her with you when you leave. She will enjoy herself more with you I promise. Also it will help Norse relations with the devils, if you do find something in each other to like. I'm not opposed to her simply working for you as an assistant, though it would be a waste. He granted an acknowledgement. I suppose she can come, but only if she's okay with it. Excellent. I'll call her back. Naruto watched as Freja raise her voice to summon the young Valkyrie back. He grumbled to himself. It seems to me, that she has some sort of hidden agenda here. A short moment later they heard footsteps and Rose Swice entered the room, followed by Rainer. Naruto didn't comment as his mate quickly made her way to him, and took a seat in his lap, leaning back against his chest. He sighed and wrapped his arms around her. Rose Swice looked to Freja. You wanted me Freja-sama. Yes actually. How do you feel about leaving Aden's service? The silver-haired girl froze. Naruto and Rainer both watched the Valkyrie as she seemed to ponder this deeply for a minute. He wondered if she had some kind of attachment to the old man. Otherwise why was she taking so long just to answer? Naruto and Rainer both jumped slightly as Rose Swice abruptly disappeared, almost teleporting to Freja's feet. She prostrated herself on the floor, her forehead connecting with the stone. Yes. I would love the Freja-sama. Aden-sama is so irresponsible, and teasing me constantly. I can never perform my duties, and I'm constantly overworked on tasks that aren't even mine to do. I would gladly be in your service. Freja glanced at Naruto and winked. Not my service Rose Swice. Naruto would be the one you would serve from now on. You would no longer be serving as Aden's servant, instead acting as Naruto's assistant until further notice. Rose Swice jerked her head up and stared at the goddess for several seconds. Then she blushed hugely. She looked back down and took a breath. Rose Swice stood up and, somehow managing to find some dignity scattered with the dust particles on the floor, she bowed to Naruto instead. I would love to serve you Naruto-sama. If you would have me. He closed his eyes briefly and nodded. Fine, under one condition. She looked up her eyes wide. Yes. No Sama. No honorifics at all. Call me Naruto alright. She blushed again, and gave a quick jerk of her head. Then she stood, brushing off her clothes. May I ask when we leave then? If I am to be your sister. We are leaving, as soon as Freja and I are done talking. And don't worry about the assistant stuff yet. I don't really have any paperwork for you to do so once we get back you'll spend most of your time training, probably. Oh Swice paused. No paperwork. At all. He nodded. A small dreamy smile crept across her face, and she walked over, falling into a chair near him. No paperwork. No escorting Aden Sama around. No trying to keep him from making detours and spying on women. She seemed to be in a daze. Naruto asked Freja, is there anything else you wanted to know, or just wanted from me in general? Freja considered this for a moment. Besides your firstborn child. I'll pretend I didn't hear that. Noted, but there isn't much else. 
I wouldn't be remembering that you visited of course, but if you do need anything Rose Swice knows how to contact me. The silver haired girl snapped out of her thoughts. Ha, huh? contact you. Frey just smiled. Contact me if Naruto requires it. Oh, right. She sighed and drifted off again. No more snide comments about my hair color, no teasing about my love life, no more strip clubs. Reina and Naruto both sweat drops. The blonde turned to Frazier. You would have asked for me to take her regardless wouldn't you? Yeah, pretty much. Naruto rolled his eyes. Okay then, I guess I'll get going. See you another time Frazier. See you Naruto. He smirked and picked Reina up, standing as he did so. Then he stepped over to Rose twice, and placed one hand on her shoulder. She glanced up. Huh. We're going now. Oh, wait we. Sona Citri grumbled inwardly as she read the last of 32 letters. She was annoyed. Why? Because fully half of them were from her big sister, wanting to come visit her. Each one was cleverly disguised as a message from one important diplomat or another. So she had no choice but to open up and read them, even though she suspected that most of them were sent by her mischievous sister. Leave it to the head of foreign affairs in the underworld to abuse her power for such a purpose. She ripped the last false letter in half, and shoved a lot of them into a trash receptacle at the side of her desk. She had too much work at the moment, to worry about such things. For instance Rias and her utterly incompetent pawn. How she was starting to loathe the boy. He was an unrepentant pervert with no redeeming features that she'd seen so far. Issei Hyodo was weak, both physically and mentally. Not to mention the fact that his head was filled with little more than perversion. Even Naruto, who outright said he wanted to seduce her, had more than enough skill and power to make him competent. Unfortunately, boosted gear or not, Issei was as weak as a normal boy his age. Speaking of which, where was that blonde nuisance anyway? She'd already broken her usual order of operations for him. What was he up to right then? It worried her, mainly because he was such an unknown variable. She couldn't say for sure when he would do, ever. He was just as likely to save your life as he was to steal your car, and just for shits and giggles. Damn he was irritating. Undeniably hot and overwhelmingly powerful, but nonetheless irritating. Wait, where did that first part come from? So Negronda stood. She didn't have time for this paperwork, and in addition to that she needed to take a long nap. Something at least to get her brain back to 100% working capacity. Otherwise she wouldn't be prepared when something happened to screw with her peace again. Satan forbid something happened when her strange new ally wasn't there to help. Now that she'd seen him defeat and cow an angel with a single move, and the same angel that decimated her whole peerage, she found herself wishing he were on hand to help. The wonderful rest of benefits that having a bit of muscle on hand could do for the mind. Crunch. A small perfectly silent scream tore from her lips as she nearly jumped out of her skin. She whirled around in time, to meet the sapphire gaze of one vampire devil hybrid. Naruto was smirking at her, while Rainer chewed on a mouthful of delicious, re, apple. Sona gave him a withering stare, the kind that grown men shrank from in terror. It was laced with so much malice that two floors down her pawn Saji screamed for mercy. Then quickly realized he was in the middle of math class instead of a whipping. He looked around sheepishly and sat back down amid the unrestrained giggles of the students around him. Meanwhile, where in the name of all four Satans, did you come from? You know, around. Naruto gave a shrug, as if the details were absolutely unimportant. Then an imaginary light bulb went off over his head. He turned and gestured to a girl standing behind him. Sona-chan, I'd like you to meet Rose Swice. She used to work for the Norse Mythos under Odin, but she's working for me now. Rose Swice stepped forward and extended a hand. It's a pleasure to meet you Sona Citri. Surprised by this the Citri air quickly shook the extended hand. Likewise, though I can't always say the same about some. She shot another basilisk's glare at Naruto. Downstairs Saji whimpered pitifully and tried to cower behind his desk. The sensei and students looked at him bewildered before the professor had two girls escort him to the nurse's office. Anyway. Naruto smirked playfully at Sona. She'll be staying with me, and I'd like to find some way for her to attend school where she's here. It will make things more convenient for the time being. The problem we have is that she's slightly older than the average student, so we either have to say she was held back. Rose Swice frowned. But we have to make her a member of the staff here, since she doesn't have any skill in illusion magic. How do you know that Naruto-sama? I didn't tell you that, and I know Freja sama didn't either. She crossed her arms under her generous chest. Is. The lax Rose Swice-chan. I'm a vampire from the second most powerful family in the world. Whether or not I'm only one-fourth of a full vampire, everyone has an aura we can sense. Sona here feels like a water user, mainly because of the malleable feel of her energy. Just like I can immediately tell, that someone has draconic powers, because they have a very distinct aura. Issei's doesn't count, because he hadn't really awakened his sacred gear yet, but I digress. Saji feels like dragon. Rose Swice. You feel like a powerful elemental user in general. Let me guess, you can use all of the primary elements at the same time in addition to standard Norse abilities. She sighed. Yes, I am very proficient in almost all kinds of destructive magic. 
I'm well above my peers in fire, water, ice, lighting, wind, etc. My only weaknesses currently are illusory magic and defensive magic. As a Valkyrie I also have control over the usual healing abilities, but because of my interest in sealing I've let those skills rust slightly. Naruto nodded. You see. I can just tell these sorts of things. Honestly being a hybrid has its benefits. Sona raised an eyebrow. On that topic I'm curious as to what your devil affinity is Naruto-san. I have the second strongest affinity for wind since the Archangel Faniel, who was capable of splitting the Red Sea with a single attack. He could have pulled a Moses every 5 minutes all day without getting tired. I don't have his skill or experience, but that's my main affinity. In addition to that I was born with the rare ability on my human side to manipulate light energy. What? Sona's eyes went wide. A vampire devil hybrid that can use holy magic how is that possible? Huh? It's not that big a deal. My father can do the same though he's only half human half vampire. It's something about my family. Plus. He grinned. I have a sacred gear, but I'm not telling you about that yet. He. She scowled. How can you have so many different advantages at the same time? It should be against the rules. Naruto laughed. Really? Against the rules. Tell that to Sersich's Lucifer. That guy can negate almost infinite amounts of magic when he goes all out. I've heard the stories from my mom. He's basically impervious to damage from 80% of fallen, angels, and devils. Even Yaokai don't get off free with him. About the only races that can use magic against a guy like him would be vampires of the highest degree and dragons. But there are so few of those it almost doesn't matter. Oh Swice interrupted. That's beside the point, is there anything that I can be doing? Sona taped her arm impatiently. I can have you join the school as a teacher. We are currently short-staffed. Can you teach? I can, I'm good at math and history. Not so much with science or literature studies. Good, then we can get you as a history teacher. Our usual teacher for that is so old that he constantly has medical issues, and substitutes are usually denied to enter the school because of his status as my home. We couldn't risk having someone from one of the other factions infiltrate using a new teacher as a disguise. Thank you, that way I can have something to occupy my time when I am not doing my duties for Naruto-sama. Naruto coughed. You know, I can take the whole Sama thing, when it's a formal occasion and I don't have a problem with it, when it comes from maids or servants, but I would rather you not use it with me, just Naruto is fine. I? She sighed. Very well. I suppose I can't refuse it now, Naruto. Great. So. Sona-chan, did anything interesting happen, while I was gone? Sona glowered. Well, no. Not particularly. Your fallen friend Cal Werner has been behaving just as was promised, although the same cannot be set for other fallen in the area. Well you were gone Hyodo-san almost died again. No kidding. Apparently it was the exact same fallen as last time, a petite blonde girl wearing a gothic dress by his description. I swear though, that boy attracts life-threatening experiences like a magnet. That's the second time he's been attacked in less than a week. Naruto raised one eyebrow in question as Rainer giggled. He asked. So, you don't consider the holder of a long giant almost dying to be an important event? As much as it may seem, cold-hearted, I find it very hard to have concern for Hyodo-san. Personally, if it wasn't for the fact that Riaz has some morbid affection for the boy, I would have him sent to the underworld. There to have his sacred gear extracted. I shudder to think what someone like him will do with that magnitude of power when he eventually gains control of it. Rainer took another bite of her apple. Can't say I blame you. There's a reason why he was seen as a threat you know. Looking between them, Rose Swice asked, who is Yodo-san? Naruto glanced back to her and attempted to describe the say properly. Okay, so let me put it this way. Imagine the most average human boy you can. A boy so ordinary that your eyes would simply pass over him on the street. A young man with absolutely no distinguishing features whatsoever. She nodded. No make him an even bigger pervert than Odin and give him a dragon-type Longinus. Rose Swice's fair skin paled even further. Dear gods. What kind of walking catastrophe has been lurking here? Sona blinked and forced a smile. My my, Naruto-san, you have a gift for describing people accurately. She looks like she's seen a ghost. Yes well, I can't help that I'm awesome. There's no need to compliment me. It's beyond my control. Rainer laughed and wrapped her arms around him from behind, kissing the back of his neck. Her gaze fell on Sona who was blushing slightly. And he modest too. She released her maid and asked, should we take care of my fallen friends before they do something stupid? I suppose. Hey Rose Swice, would you like to come along? The Valkyrie shrugged. I do not mind accompanying you. Naruto was about to nod but paused halfway through. Actually, you go with Sona-chan and get all this teaching stuff sorted out. Then find Cal Werner. She's a fallen angel who's enrolled here. She can take you back to the apartment after school. What will you be doing? Rose Swice tucked a loose strand of hair behind her ear. I don't imagine that defeating a few fallen will take very long. He smirked. I have a few things to take care of back at the apartment afterwards. Don't worry about me. Anyway, see you later. 
Naruto dragged Rainer against him, and disappeared in a flash of yellow light. A second passed and Rose Weiss continued to stare at the spot where they had disappeared from. Eventually she shook her head hard, and turned to Sona. May we get down to business Sona-san? Certainly Rose Weiss-san. Follow me. Rainer and Naruto stepped from the forest and into the wide clearing, gazing forward to the small church that was hidden in the trees. They shared a look before continuing forward toward the dilapidated building. This was the abandoned church that the Fallen had been using as a secret base in Kuro. Obviously, since this was a devil-controlled town, they wouldn't be leaving its comparative safety very often. Naruto could already sense the two life forms nearby, with one approaching them quickly. In fact they hadn't gone three steps before the flutter of wings alerted them to something supernatural approaching. Rainer. Both of them glanced up as someone, their silhouette outlined by blue sky, fell to earth. Naruto then got his first look at the one known as Middled. Middled was, unique. She was one of those fallen angels who purposefully chose to keep a childish form, for some reason, that others would never understand. She was a full two heads shorter than him with a petite body, and long blonde hair tied up with a large black ribbon. Middle was draped in a black gothic dress just as he'd heard from Sona and Rainer. Her legs were covered by white stockings, and on her feet, were small black shoes. Her sharp blue eyes reminded him of a cat. Middled, it's been a while. Rainer. She bolted forward, completely ignoring Naruto as she made a beeline for his mate. Rainer held her ground as the tiny blonde missile impacted her, arms wrapping around her waist. Standing off to the side Naruto watched with one raised eyebrow. Rainer, I thought you were dead. I thought that stupid human sacred gear wielder killed you. She buried her face into Rainer's chest, her arms squeezing tightly. Where have you been Rainer? Rainer awkwardly patted the top of Middle's head. She hadn't realized the blonde fallen girl had cared for her this much. Middle certainly hadn't shown this level of concern for her at any other time before. So why was she losing it now? Middle? What's going on? Middle reluctantly pulled away, as sorry. I just, thought I wouldn't see you again. Yes, I get that, but why? I didn't know you worried about me this much. Rainer glanced at her mate. Naruto shrugged and flicked his eyes towards the church. Through their mental link she could almost hear his voice. I'll take care of the other guy. You deal with her. Rainer nodded to him, then turned her attention back to Middled. Naruto stepped into the shadows of the abandoned church, leaving Rainer to handle the pint-sized fallen. His eyes darted around the mostly empty chamber. It looked much how he expected it to. The floor was strewn with dust, leaves, broken glass, and other debris. Obviously this place had seen better days, and the fallen living in it were doing nothing to improve the situation. He sighed inwardly as he caught sight of the black wings that were perched high up near the ceiling. So, a stray devil walks into our territory huh? You're pretty brave kid. And what makes you think that I'm a stray? Your small tells me you're not an evil piece, and I would recognize you, if you were a high devil. I might be weaker than some of my comrades, but I'm old enough to know most, if not all of the current high devils. Naruto raised one eyebrow. You sure about that? Pretty sure, although I am curious how you can be so powerful without me having heard of you before now. There are a lot of things that you fallen don't know. Naruto directed his finger back at himself. And I am one of those things. So what's your name Devil-san? The name is Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, and yours. What? Cat got your tongue. The fallen angel looked down at him with a slightly unnerved expression. Did you just say you were an Uzumaki? Yes, I suppose you actually know what that means then. Good, then you know you have no chance of defeating me. But I hope you won't just give up on fighting me. I like a good fight, and while I agree that you're weak, you're old. I bet you have enough experience to keep up with me if I lower my speed and power. Do not patronize me boy, although I realize you're very much correct. I stand no chance against you. Naruto smirked as the fallen tilted his hat in an ever, so slight sign of respect. Then I take it, you aren't going to fight with me. Now whoever said that. I'll have you know that I was saving a little something back in case I had to fight a far superior opponent. The fallen flashed a small toothy smile, and held up a hand on which there was a long bladed gauntlet. What's that? That's a little sacred gear I picked up the other day. You'd be amazed how many scared gear users there are in this little town. It's almost like God himself decided to make this place a recruiting ground. Although, knowing God's original purpose for sacred gears, blows that out of the water. Naruto's lips pursed as he looked at the gauntlet. It was a silvery white, with hints of gold inlet into the blade. Not spiked and barbaric as the Longinus that is say, this sacred gear was smooth, resembling a plate mail gauntlet from an old set of knight's armor. He didn't recognize it at all, which was odd because he thought he knew all the recorded sacred gears. Ah, trying to figure out what this is a. Well let's just say I was surprised to find it as much as you are seeing it. The sacred gear is called Carnage Lock, and it's a close range sacred gear. I haven't figured out all its powers, yet since it isn't in the recorded list of sacred gears, but this first ability I find very useful. The fallen grinned and curled the gauntlet into a tight fist, closing his eyes and pumping a huge amount of his light energy into the artifact. 
Naruto didn't step back or shield his eyes as the armored glove began to glow bright white, and then it was gone, replaced by a large longsword. This little beauty does scary things to devils my friend. I tested it out on Astralis night, and, oh dear, it's just unfair how deadly this blade is against filth like you. Naruto's eye twitched. I'm going to enjoy this. You said your name was Uzumaki right? That's the name of the original house of Lucifer. I'll get promoted just for killing you, which is something I would have done anyway, so it's a win-win, or should I say, win-lose. Seeing how you'll be dead. His eyebrow began spasming uncontrollably as a frown made its way onto his face. My name is Donasik and I will kill you Naruto Uzumaki. You devil scum weren't meant to exist on this world. You're an accident that needs to be cleaned up, and I'm just the one to do it. Now die. Naruto's head tilted to the side as the glowing blade breezed past his ear. His voice was deadly calm as he grabbed the fallen's wrist in a vice-like grip. You know something I really hate? It's when people underestimate me. I'm Naruto fucking Uzumaki, the heir to the house of Lucifer. And you don't even rate a 2 on my give a shit scale. This sacred gear couldn't permanently harm me, even if you impaled me with it. That being said, it'll make a nice present for my girl. Donasik screamed as his hand, along with the sword it held, was removed with a quick flick of Naruto's wrist. The fuck? You shut up will you? Didn't your mother ever tell you? It's not polite to shout in church, much less curse. I'll fucking kill you devil scum. Nice try. Naruto smiled and stepped forward, his vampire power freezing Donasik in place. I haven't used this in a while. Not since the last yaokai was brought for me to absorb, but it should work perfectly fine on you. What the? Naruto held him in place with a single glance from his now crimson eyes, catching the fallen and nailing him where he stood. Then he raised a hand and put a single finger against Donasik's temple. He grinned. Maelstrom absorption, balance breaker. Touch of consumption. Donasik opened his mouth to scream, but no sound came out. A blinding flash of yellow light lit the chapel, and then it was dark again. Feathers slowly fell from dead wings as the white unseeing eyes rolled back. Naruto released the corpse of the fallen angel, letting it fall to the ground with a dry thump. He raised his hand again, looking at it. He could feel the light energy rushing through his veins again. All the power he could take from Raynor would never do this. His vampire powers combined with his human affinity for light energy wasn't responsible for such incredible power. No, this was the true test of his balance breaker. He just sucked Donasik's soul right out of his body, and with it his spiritual core. Which would allow him to control Donasik's power, as though it were his own. Admittedly his sacred gear couldn't account for decades, or even centuries of training, but still, this was his power. The ability to drain life with a single touch and then use all the power of the one he stole it from. It was just like the Yaokai energy, the chakra he'd taken from the various monsters Rizavan brought him. He stole their power and their life with it. And now he could use it just as well as they could. And that's that. Naruto sighed and bent to pick up the still glowing sword. He absently noted that it responded to his touch, probably because he now had Donasik's life energy running through him. That would be useful. He could just pull what was left of the fallen's power out of the sword, leaving it a blank slate. Honestly, his sacred gear was the unfair one here. Every day he found new uses for it. Naruto muttered to himself about never having any good fights anymore, and left the chapel, closing the door behind him. Almost immediately he saw his mate with the petite fallen girl. Both of them were talking, although it seemed like Raynor was a bit exasperated. He walked over to them. But Raynor. He's a devil. He can't love you. He's evil and he needs to die. Middled, for the last time. You are not going to even try to hurt him. First of all, because I will kill you if you try. And second because he will kill you if you try. We are mated already, and that is that. But, Raynor growled and smacked her shorter friend upside the head. Get it through your thick skull already. I don't know why you have this obsession with me all of a sudden, but if you get between me and Naruto I will roast your ass. He's, he's. My mate is exactly what he is. You know the implications so there is no point in continuing this conversation. I love him, got it. Middle scowled and stamped her foot angrily. He's a devil. And? What is your problem with that? He's also a prince. So what? He's our enemy. Naruto watched as Raynor abruptly ran out of patience. She grabbed a hold of her blonde fallen ally, and proceeded to put her in a headlock, while she used one knuckle to grind into the top of her head. Now get this through this cast iron skull of yours. He is mine damn it. And unless you're so eager to die you'll accept that and work for him. Wah. That hurts. The damn well should. Stop. Ow, ow, ow. Middle howled in pain as Raynor's knuckle ground relentlessly into her cranium. Naruto just stood there smirking and waiting for the two of them to notice him. Eventually Raynor growled. Do you yield? Yes. Will you hassle my mate? No. Raynor dropped middled. Good. Now I'm out of patience. Are you coming with, or are you running off? I want to stay with you. Arg, fine. Just don't mess with me or Naruto. If you do I'll have him string you up by your ankles over a pit of electric eels or something. Now Naruto-chan, no need to be threatening her. You're scary enough without those. 
Both of them looked up suddenly. You killed Onisik. Yep, if he had been any weaker I would have suspected he was made from cardboard. He couldn't even scratch me, and he had an unregistered sacred gear. Naruto held up the sword, which had deformed into a gauntlet only a moment before. It's a low mid-level from what I can tell, but it could bring you to the next level, if you use it properly. Baino whistled. He had time to get a sacred gear, while he was here. Jeez this place must be crawling with him. I know. It certainly seems that way. He glanced down at Middles. Are you going to behave? Because if you aren't then you're out on your own. And I'd like to see you try, and save yourself from Kakabiel, when he decided to track you down. Middle's face went white with fear. I thought so. Now, Rainer, that cross for extracting sacred gears is still down there and operational right? Yes. She tilted her head in question. Do you want to use it? Not at the moment. However there will come a time, when we are forced to kill someone with a sacred gear. And under normal circumstances many sacred gears are bound to the host of death, and can be removed after. They end up manifesting elsewhere in some random human. And I prefer to have the sacred gear as a bonus reward for defeating my enemies. Besides, who knows when we'll come across an artifact, that could be very useful. Of course, am I going to get one then? Rainer asked with a slightly giddy tone. You can have this one if you want. He walked over to her, and slipped his arms around her waist. But now that I think about it, we should probably wait until I get a stronger one. Hey. Stop holding Rainer like that. Naruto sighed and pushed his face into the crook of his mate's neck. Listen twerp. She's my mate. If you start causing me problems I'll bite you, drain your power till you're unconscious, and leave you here. When I rapidly changing back to blue regarded her coldly. And I won't regret doing so either. But. Rainer jetpanned. Middled, this is your cue to shut up. Okay. Naruto nodded, satisfied by her somewhat dejected mutterings. Now, let's get that cross out into my place, before someone shows up here wondering, what the big flare of power was. Sona's peerage is appraised of our actions, but the Grimmery's is not. Good idea. Rainer smirked and ground her hips backwards into him. Speaking of which, weren't you going to seduce Rhea's Grimmery or something? He chuckled and bit her softly, dragging his fangs down over her skin. All in due time, she'll be mine, but I think you deserve some time with me before I have my fun. Don't you? Damn straight. Excellent. His eyes darted to the right. We really should go now. I can sense a couple devils getting close to our position. Come on. We're going to my place. I'll snatch the cross later. The two fallen girls nodded, and they vanished into the trees. A moment later two figures burst into the clearing. One with sword drawn and at the ready, while the other strode forward, crimson hair billowing out behind her. Kiba. Check the perimeter. I sense latent light energy in the air. There are fallen about. Yes president. Boom. The chapel door slammed open, and Rhea's Gremory stepped into the shadows of the abandoned house of God. Her eyes darted around, piercing the shadows as if they weren't there. No sooner did she look than see it. Her heels clicked loudly in the silent ruin as she walked forward to the fallen's corpse. What's this? A fallen, but why is he dead already? President. Rhea's turned on her heel, seeing Kiba dart into the chapel. The light residue in the air doesn't extend into the forest. If they left that way then they did so with their power hidden. Everything we can sense is coming from in here. I see. She frowned dangerously. Sona has been remarkably silent of late on the presence of the phone. It's almost as if she doesn't care. I don't understand it, but maybe she knew somehow that they would be dealt with, but I assumed that this wouldn't be the only one. I don't think it is. But is not it. Yes, I think you're right. But we have to assume that this fallen was killed by another fallen. Since I wasn't aware of any other threats in the area. The fallen are fighting among themselves then. Not the worst thing that could happen. Agreed. Now we should get back. I'm confident in my power against lesser fallen, but only the two of use wouldn't be sufficient to fight a more powerful foe. Let's return to the club room. Akeno will be away for a while and Kaneko should be back in a few hours. Kiba didn't reply to that. He only gave the chapel one last glance before he left, falling into step behind his king. They left the building, and started off in the direction of Kuo Academy. Kiba, there's something on your mind. Yes president. Would you mind? He shook his head. Of course not. It's just that, what did you send them to do? From what it sounded like and how much Akeno was packing you sent her to the underworld. That is correct. I needed to cash in a favor with my brother. Issei seems to be completely and utterly incompetent. If it weren't for his longinus I would regret recruiting him in the first place. He's a drain on our resources and gives us almost nothing back. Aya's growled to herself angrily. And I spend all eight of my pawns on him as well. It's so unfair. If I knew how, how pathetic he was I would have let Sona have him. But no, I just had to let my greed get the better of me. I could see how lame he was from the first, but the moment I suspected he had a longinus I threw it all out the window. Kiba chuckled. He has, some, good points. Oh yes. He's very enthusiastic when it comes to leering at my breasts or my ass, and he positively glows every time he manages to get his grubby hands on me. She shivered. 
It's unnatural for a human to be so completely possessed by the sin of lust. I mean, I wouldn't mind having a man right now. It would be good for me for more than one reason, but to say, no. Just, no. What was the favor you're calling in? My brother has a mutated piece he's been saving. He accidentally damaged a set made by Juka. The damaged pieces were fused together into a completely new piece in order not to waste costly components. He raised an eyebrow, and he would allow you to have it. Yes. It will replace one of my free pieces, but it is stronger than a queen. I should be able to transfer it into a say and recover my eight pawns. I see. That would be very helpful. Yes, but the issue still stands. I need to get some reasonably powerful members in my peerage and quickly. Issei was not the ace in the hole I was looking for. In fact you might turn into a liability in a raiding game. I'm worried that I'll lose a Longinus if I send him into any real battle. Kiba scratched his chin thoughtfully. What about that girl, what's her name? She's a new class with long blue hair and yellow eyes. I swear she's got something special about her. Perhaps she's an option. Maybe, but I had my eye on Naruto. Uzumaki? Yes, him. He intrigues me. Every time I see him, I get this sense that he has power. It's very very faint. Almost as if he's trying to hide something. But as soon as I really focus on him it's gone. It helps that unlike Issei he is very easy on the eyes. Issei isn't ugly per se. I didn't say he was. He is merely plain. He's like a ham sandwich. You could be satisfied with him, but you weren't going to brag about how good he was. You're like a well-made club sandwich. You're pretty good, but a little on the light side. I'm not sure if that was an insult or a compliment president. It was a small compliment. Besides, you probably already have a big head from all your fangirls. He cringed. Please do not assume I enjoy that. I'm in fear of losing my sanity, among other things, nearly every time I go to school. Duly noted. But as I was saying, Naruto is a bit more than that. He has an interesting personality from what I've seen. He isn't bland. Point in fact he looks quite exotic. He's clearly Japanese, and yet he has blonde hair and blue eyes. Not to mention how tall he is. In addition to, that there are the marks on his cheeks which I'm sure you've heard about. I assure you, I have. Only every single girl in the school wants to touch them to see what they feel like. He sound almost annoyed. Well, Kiba frowned. If he was only a bit more talkative and polite to people, I would be able to pass the job of number one pretty boy in school to him. Maybe I'd actually get some time to myself then. Ayaz giggled. You really are annoyed. I bet you would give all the money you made in the last year, just to get all the girls focused on him instead of you. Kiba grunted in confirmation. The question isn't what I would give. It's what I wouldn't give. He's the only one in the school who has a chance of distracting the fangirls from me. His fists clenched. So, close, and I wouldn't have to spend every moment of every day watching where I go, or what I say to people. If it makes you feel any better I personally would like to know what they feel like too. I know, Akeno was being rather insistent that I somehow set up a meeting the day before yesterday. She tried to tell me it was for you. Is she now? I'll have to talk to her about that. They continued for another few minutes before Kiba asked. And Kaneko. She's keeping tabs on Naruto and a few others in her spare time, people I suspect may have sacred gears or some supernatural connection. Are you sure it's wise for her to go alone? Ayas shrugged. She is a Nekamata and a Rook. Out of all of us, she has the most chance of slipping in and out without being found. And even if she is found she has the highest chance of survival due to being so durable. I guess so. Meanwhile. Hey everyone. We're home. Did you miss me? Naruto stopped in the living room, Rainer and Middle coming to a stop just behind him. Um, who is that? Cal Werner, Rose Swice, and Sona were sitting in his living room. And across from them was a young blonde girl with an expression that quite perfectly defined innocence. Naruto frowned. Hello. Answers please. Kalwiner shrugged. This girl was our target. We found her by chance entering the town. She was completely lost and doesn't speak Japanese, so she probably couldn't have even found a hotel. We didn't see the guy who was supposed to pick her up, so we guess he's still around here somewhere. The guy's an exorcist, or at least that's what we were told. And why are you still here Sona? I merely wanted to be sure that the issue with the Fallen was resolved. That way I can stop avoiding Rias. And on a side note you should know that she's become interested in you. She has her work Kaneko looking for potential peerage members. Momo noticed the other day. I would suggest you get your affairs concerning her in order. Once Rias gets a hold of something she doesn't like letting go. Naruto's frown turned into a very fiendish smile at hearing this. Good for me. Once she thinks that I'm her she'll do half my work for me. You're still going on about seducing her. Of course. Then I have a warning for you. He narrowed his eyes at the citrier. A threat Sona Chan. No, only a bit of advice. Take it as you will, but I won't let you interfere with something of this scale without knowing what you're getting into. And pray tell, what exactly am I getting into? Sona crossed her arms and leaned back. Ryuz is hiding the fact, but her family has arranged for her to be married to Riser Phoenix, third son of the foe. I know who the guy is. 
We've met once before. He's a lecherous asshole. She raised an eyebrow. And you aren't. Lecherous. Definitely. An asshole, only in certain circumstances. However there is one thing, that really separates us. I may seduce women, but I care for the ones I seduce. If I don't have an interest in you, I won't even try. Riser on the other hand sees women as possessions. Let's just say he took a little advice he got from my uncle, a bit too close to heart. I suppose I can see the truth in that. Does that mean you have a romantic interest in Rius? And what if I do? The head of the house Lucifer is expected to have a certain number of wives. Politically it's an excellent match. And she is beautiful. It helps that she's also both strong-willed and intelligent, traits I like in a woman. Humph. Very well Naruto-san. My warning has been delivered and ignored. Am I to assume, that the trouble with the Fallen is dealt with, and that only their leader and this rogue exorcist is to be feared now? Pretty much. Then I will take my leave. See you at the school Naruto-san, and do take care of Ashia and bring her to school with her. I've already sent my familiar to have her enrolled. Fine by me. Are you still going to refrain from telling your sister about me? She paused on her way out the door. Well, yes. Both my common sense and my dislike of my meddling sister have combined to drive me to that conclusion. Don't take too much advantage of it. See you later then. Ended. There was a flash of blue light as Sona was swallowed by her indigo summoning circle. Naruto turned back to the room. Kalwiner was reclining a bit more easily now that Sona was gone, and Rose Swice looked slightly more comfortable. Ashi on the other hand. Ano, who are you? Naruto turned to the blonde girl, sitting on his couch like a small defenseless puppy. She looked about as cute as one too. For some reason her nun's habit managed to add to the mo factor even more than usual. The name is Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, and in case you didn't know what the Uzumaki stands for it is the human given name to the house of Lucifer. He moved over to the couch and sat down. Rainer was in his lap a second later, her feet up on the low coffee table. And you? Oh Lucifer. She looked absolutely panicked, and it was incredibly cute. Eh? No need to worry about that little girl. I'm not much older than you. I'm not some big bad devil who enjoys eating virgins and sacrificing babies. Ashia visibly had to force herself to calm down after that, her eyes darting everywhere around the room, avoiding him. So, um, Lucifer Sama. Just call me Naruto, or if you have to Naruto-san. I'm not real big on the honorifics. Oh, okay. Rainer groaned. Damn, I couldn't have killed this girl. Can you imagine how guilty I would have felt, I mean damn. I know what you mean. Naruto muttered. Innocence incarnate, huh? Kalwiner nodded absently, her eyes on Naruto not the nun. She noted the fact that Naruto's slightly clawed fingers were tracing circles over Rainer's belly. She wished she could switch places with her. Naruto repeated his earlier question. So what's your full name Ashia? Ashia Argento. Aha, and what exactly does your sacred gear do? She looked up startled and tried to hide her hands. You can't have them. He sighed. I'm not going to take them Ashia. They're bound to your soul and taking them would kill you. Besides I've already saved your life. Why would I kill you for your sacred gear when these three were about to do that anyway? Ashia seemed to consider this, and then dropped her head in embarrassment, evidently having not thought of it yet. Don't be embarrassed Ashia-chan. For now you'll be staying with me. Once you get settled and you can move out, or go where you wish. But since you don't know the language around here and most stuff that's translated isn't into French or Latin, you would be smart to have someone go with you who knows the area. Bye, okay Naruto-san. So, would you mind telling me, what your sacred gear does exactly? I know it heals people and devils, but that's all I really know about it. She nodded in a timid way, and took a deep breath. Okay, I don't know much about it, but, it heals anything I press my hands to, I don't have very good control, and I can't use it to heal anyone far away, I know that I can heal people faster, if they're asleep or unconscious, but I never, really could use it much. I was banished not long after I found out I could heal devils. That's fine for starters I guess. It's not that much more than we already knew, but then again, you're not the first to use the twilight healing rings. He turned to the others. So, that's all I wanted to know right now. I think we could use some more food in the house with two more people. And Kalwiner, you'll need to share the bed, or sleep with me and Rainer, Rainer's discretion of course. Rainer sighed and glanced up at Kalwiner. If I must. She can sleep with us, but no funny business. I won't. Kalwiner insisted. Much, he. Then the guest room goes to Rose Swice and Ashia. Rainer, Kalwiner, and I will have the main bed. And Middle can take the couch. Why do I get stuck with the couch? Because you were being annoying earlier. That and because you're the smallest of us. Even Ashia is bigger than you. And on top of, that you're used to sleeping in uncomfortable places. Ashia and Rose Swice aren't. Middle grumbled and let out what he assumed to be a Tsundre-esque comment, before walking into the kitchen. Naruto licked his lips as she went. His thirst had returned despite all the blood he consumed lately. Oh well, it wasn't as if Rainer would ever object to him biting her would she? Ah Chan, you can come shopping with me. Ashia can come too, so we can get her some regular clothes. 
He leaned in, whispering past her ear. Plus I'm getting really thirsty. You would taste so good right now. But we can do it. Well Lashia looks for something to wear. She smiled. Sure thing Naruto-kun. Then let's go. About a half an hour later Ashia found herself, blushing red as a tomato, inside a lingerie shop that Rainer had all but dragged Naruto into. He was dragging her once he realized what it was, she stood her hands shaking slightly as Rainer put on an impromptu fashion show. Naruto was obviously enjoying it. Ashia felt her face flame again, as Rainer yanked the changing room curtain aside for what must have been the 20th time. She quickly turned in the opposite direction, and pinched herself hard. What was wrong with her? Why couldn't she just leave the shop? It was like Rainer was a magnet, keeping her here in this incredibly embarrassing situation. Ashia heard the click of heels and thought that she was leaving to go behind again, so she turned around. Her eyes went white. Rainer was now straddling Naruto and wearing possibly the most risque outfit yet. It consisted of a tube top bra in pink that was all ruffles. But it was only about an inch and a half wide, leaving most of her breasts on full display. It seemed to stay on only by virtue of her nipples. A little above, that she had a black leather choker spiked with a chain, which Naruto was now holding. Her lower regions were covered barely by a black and pink thong. It was so loosely tied a single touch might cause it to slip off. Last of all she wore knee-high black boots, that conformed perfectly to her sculpted legs. There were cutouts going down either side, showing off fed more skin. But what caught Ashia's attention, and caused her face to light up like hot coals was the fact, that they were kissing, passionately, lustfully. She'd never seen, or even heard of this, this was like Frenching, but harder, rougher. It was. Ashia fainted. A moment later Rainer pulled away from her lover and glanced at the passed out nun. She laughed, but was cut off by Naruto's fangs slipping into her throat. Rainer gasped and moaned, turning her attention back to her mate. Nar, harder. He obliged and she let out a muted scream of pleasure. She could feel her core growing hot, and her breathing sped up, her eyes focused on the blonde head directly under hers and the, mmm. The heart pulsing problem rubbing against her lower lips. This could be bad, we're in a human store, but, fuck I really want him in me right now Rainer shifted, grinding down into his crotch. Naruto-kun, I won. Hey what the heck is going on in he, oh, why hell. Is it you Naruto? Naruto froze, his blood having gone suddenly cold. Rainer stiffened too, her eyes white as she stared over his shoulder. Now let me tell you. This, is a nice surprise. And to think I was just coming in here to check on some girls while I was in town. Damn, the goddess of luck must be trying to make up for all the beatings in the last 2000 years. Swallowing slowly Naruto pulled away from Rainer, and turned his head to look behind him. Massive 6 foot plus frame. Check. Shockingly white hair. Also check. Funny red facial marks that look like tears. A serbingly lecherous grin, that never goes away. Pencil and notebook already working away like a hurricane. Check, check, and check. Irotenshi. Would you stop calling me that brat? Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoyed. If you want a next part of this video, like subscribe, and comment down below, and turn on that bell notification, and also check out the other videos that I have created, and enjoy. See you in the next video. Peace.